In 1945, the 393rd Bomber Squadron was stationed here. It flew regular practice runs for the day it was to drop an atom bomb on Hiroshima. Enola Gay, the plane which carried the bomb, was in the hangar next to the one containing Project Tesla. Golka believes that ball lightning can help start up nuclear fusion reactions and solve the world's energy problem. Unlike present-day nuclear fission power stations which create radioactive waste when heavy elements are split, Nuclear fusion should be cheap and clean because it works by combining readily available hydrogen isotopes. But it needs tremendously high temperatures confined in a tiny space to get it going. Goka thinks the apparent self-containment mechanism of the ball lightning football could supply both startup energy and container. Golka's coil goes one better than Tesla's. It discharges a spectacular 25 million volts. If one of the streamers makes ball lightning, all this terrific energy should be contained inside the ball. Golka inspects the discharges at close hand, wearing a protective suit. Unfortunately, it hasn't worked. Long-lasting ball lightning hasn't appeared. Golka has retreated to raise more money and Project Tesla is in suspended animation. But Teslarians following other clues are still hard at work. Most Tesla enthusiasts concentrate on his work with wireless and his experiments at Colorado Springs. They claim that this interference with shortwave radio transmissions is caused by a Tesla magnifying transmitter. The noise is called the woodpecker because it makes a little pecking noise 10 times per second. It's been going on since 1976 and it's blotted out radio transmissions on frequencies between 6 and 20 megahertz. 10 pulses a second is extremely low frequency. The woodpecker has been traced to Latvia there seems to be a second transmitter near Kiev and a third further to the east. It's not jamming, it's too random, so what are the Russians up to? Andrew Mikrovsky is an official working for the Canadian government in Ottawa. In his spare time he runs a group called Planetary Association for Clean Energy, PACE for short. PACE thinks the Russians are using a Tesla transmitter to affect the way we behave. Now, the signals, especially the one that you see on the oscilloscope, which are magnetic only, and by the way, that's the Soviet signal, that happens to be something that can work on my brain and anybody uh, on this planet at this time. Uh, because it is the same frequency in the same frequency range, and it is also the same type of activity that goes in our brain. That is the terrible thing about the Soviet signals, the capacity to impose on the way people would, quote, think. This thinking I'm talking about is the thinking of being peaceful, the, the ability to be calm, um, uh, the ability to rationalize, are all affected from a purely mental point of view by signals of this nature. Is there any defense? This personal transmitter puts out 7.8 cycles a second, which Mikrovsky says is a natural planetary frequency the body is tuned to. It swamps the incoming signal from the woodpecker. Remove the transmitter's protective field and the Russian signal reasserts itself. 
It is being used, as far as we are aware, by the German civil service. Uh, there in Germany is called Weiterset. And it is mainly a protective mechanism to ensure that the, a German civil servant, especially on external affairs duty, uh, is able to keep his composure uh, for, in negotiations, or especially uh, with other people, uh, other countries, to make sure that they're not influenced. The German government denies using the microset, but Mikroski is sure it works. That's one approach to the problem, but there's a more likely solution. The Russians might be trying out a form of over-the-horizon radar, which would allow them to locate incoming objects with extreme accuracy, even if they're totally out of line of sight. One analysis says every woodpecker pulse carries a sophisticated code. Each pulse lasts 3,100 microseconds. Over a sequence of 100 microsecond intervals, the signal is counted as a zero until it reverses phase or direction. Phase reversal changes the zero to one. Each further reversal alters one to zero and back again until all the pulse has been transmitted. The final list gives what's called a maximum length pseudo-random binary sequence, a unique code. When a signal is returned from an approaching object, it can only be used if its pattern matches precisely the pattern of the transmitted signal, a sort of key that fits into a lock. The result gives a radar system which can see five times further than any ordinary radar of the same power, or more likely, five times more accurately at the same distance. There's almost certainly no connection with Tesla and the magnifying transmitter, but ELF, extremely low frequency, will be most important for the United States submarine fleet in years to come. Could submarines be protected by our development of Tesla's wireless work? Submarines are at their most vulnerable when they approach the surface to communicate with their headquarters. To change that, the US Navy is building two giant wireless stations up near the Canadian border in Wisconsin and Michigan. Each of them will radiate under four watts, just enough to light a doll's house. But the power behind each transmitter will be enormous. The station at Clam Lake needs two aerials, each 14 miles long. That's because the signals, like the woodpecker, will go out at extremely low frequency, ELF, which requires special arrangements. Because ELF is low frequency, it takes a long time to send a message, but it does penetrate the ocean to great depth. Vessels like the newly launched Ohio will be able to receive operating orders without ever rising to the perils at the surface. Most Teslarians believe that the great man described ELF transmissions in his patents and that the US Navy went back to those patents for the concept. But what did Tesla actually say? It is necessary to employ oscillations in which the rate of radiation of energy into space in the form of Hertzian or electromagnetic waves is very small. The lowest frequency would appear to be six or second. All credit to Tesla for even thinking in this area, but it becomes clear from the context that he was describing the sending of electrical energy without wires through the earth and not the sending of radio waves through the sea. We're in at the beginning of a new scientific cult based on what seems to be misunderstanding of Tesla's work. The problem for modern Teslarians is that Tesla himself got it wrong. His wireless experiments were based on inaccurate theory, and power transmission without wires can never be made to work efficiently. It was Tesla's search for the Holy Grail, and it failed. He never had another success. And as time went on, his behavior became more and more obsessive. By the 1920s, his only real friends were pigeons. He came here to Brown Square in New York to feed them regularly particularly a favorite one of his, which he loved like a brother. He socialized only once each year, 
his birthday when he gave a party for journalists who were looking for gee whiz stories. Tesla gave them the lot. Weather control, death rays, interplanetary messages. At the same time, his name faded from the role of serious scientists. The sad thing is that he did still have brilliant ideas for the future, but nothing to do with electricity. In the 1920s, he designed this vertical takeoff aircraft. The pilot's seat swivels to keep him upright when the plane trims for horizontal flight. Ridiculous? Not at all. How about this experimental American aircraft, the Convair Pogo? He planned to power the plane with another of his inventions, the bladeless turbine. The idea went back nearly 50 years to his childish design of a water wheel in the stream near his home. The machine works both as a turbine or pump, using an effect called boundary layer drag. It's now being manufactured in California. The working part of the pump is the rotor, and the liquid or gas go in here. The boundary layer effect forces it to the outside of the spinning discs. The discs revolve extremely fast, and at the beginning of the century, the metal Tesla used wasn't good enough to avoid stretching under the strain. That problem has now been solved by C.R. Porcel, the reinventor and improver of Tesla's concept. His five horsepower machine throws a hundred gallons of water a minute, but the device's real value is its amazing flexibility. This pump has a unique capability of pumping a wide variety of materials. For instance, we pump uh, half-inch diameter rocks up vertically 65 feet in a small amount of air. We also can pump live fish from the nets in the ocean right up to the cannery without damaging the skin of the fish at all. We pumped a trub sludge for a brewery that was 82% solids, which I believe is a world record for this type of pumping. This idea of using boundary layer drag is Tesla's basic idea. But Tesla is mainly remembered today for the wrong reasons, for the things he didn't do. Why have his real achievements suffered such a total eclipse? Well, at one level, he had little interest in commerce or selling his ideas. Unlike Edison, Westinghouse or Marconi, he left no company behind him with a vested interest in promoting its founder's name. Then, he was not willing to discuss his ideas with his colleagues. Instead, he gossiped to journalists. But most of all, I think, he had no university contacts and he never published his results. Had he done so, his work would have been used as a major reference work for students for at least 30 years, and Tesla's name would have been listed amongst the immortals. Tesla died in 1943, out of phase with his world to the last. Only five months after his death, the United States Supreme Court set aside some of the Marconi claims to have invented wireless. Other people, Tesla included, had done the work first. But his best memorial is not wireless, nor is it the work done in his name today. Instead, it's all around us, in the world of electricity, he left to lighten our darkness.